I, I have a model that I created that I always keep in the back of my mind that goes along with those four major areas. That is the demographic characteristics, why people join, uh, the participation, which includes the quantity of, of the trading about how often people are engaged, and then the quality about what they're actually trading and who they're trading with. All of these things uh, might indeed, we would expect, have impact on outcomes and what people gain from participation in these networks. So I will uh, launch into some major findings now, and particularly about uh, who joins and the demographics of members. And uh, we, we have some more demographic variables uh, available, but for, for now this evening, I'm going to focus on just a few. And we see that, that most, member, most members are women, that it's, it's uh, around three quarters in the case of HEP, 77.4% uh, in community exchange, and 79% in the member to member. Uh, the consistency across the three cases is pretty remarkable. This has actually been found in previous research on time banking in the UK, as well as on LETS, a form of, of local currency, uh, primarily in the UK from the 80s to 90s. And so these, these do tend to be uh, largely female. Uh, in our cases of our exchange, Portland Community Exchange, we see that participants are highly educated, particularly in the HEP case here in Portland. Uh, with 72% uh, of our survey respondents reporting a bachelor's degree or higher. Um, the, uh, the, the income aspects of participants are interesting as well and in that we see uh, many participants have limited income. So there are some commonalities across the three cases. Otherwise, there's a lot of variance and some of these are programmatic in that 100% uh, of member to member uh, participants are 65 years of age or older based on how the program itself is defined. Uh, so that, that in a quick nutshell tells us who joins the, the demographics. Um, we, they, they're, we were not the first to find that women are more likely to join these things and we do, we do know from research on volunteering that women are more likely to volunteer. We know that, that uh, females experience higher poverty rates. Uh, there's also a, 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 quite a bit of discussion about women being more open to these concepts, economic alternatives, and do a lot of informal labor. The, some of the major findings from uh, the motivation battery, I subjected the nice participants of Our Exchange Portland to 30 questions about why they joined. And so what I was able to do was make some scales here about, uh, about why people decided to join the Hour Exchange Portland. And it, this was a typical ordinal Likert type scale with, with not at all, a little to some extent, to a great extent. And it added these things up with sophisticated factor analysis and reliability analysis. And what we found here in the motivation analysis is that uh, most people are joining to get things they need, economic needs, are the highest rated here. And very close behind uh, is to support their values. That is, that, that they join to act out on their values about challenging the larger economic system and acting on their own and being an important part of their community, being part of a social change effort. Uh, and then it went down from there, and what was what was interesting too is that social reasons are ranked rather low in comparison to the others here at our exchange, Portland. So once we had these nice scales of motivations, we went on to look at the extent to which demographics uh, predict these scales. And so uh, we ran regression models and tried to determine you know, who holds these motivations. So some of these major findings here, is, that female HEP members state that they're more likely to join to get things they need and they want, so very instrumental motivations. Um, those with lower incomes and those in, that are reporting they're in poorer health join to get things they need as well. And then for the social reasons, there's interesting finding here that those with less education, older members, and those who are recently unemployed are all more likely to state joining for social reasons. And in each of those groups, uh, previous research has shown, tend to have smaller social networks. So this, the, this set of findings align perfectly with what we might expect. Some of the major transaction findings, moving on to what, what the volume, the quantity of, tr transferred, 
uh, transactions that occur here. Uh, we have this information for both Our Exchange Portland and Community Exchange. Um, we, we see that across that history from 98 to 2010, uh, there were 1,631 individuals here in, in the greater Portland area that uh, have been members and 176 organizations, so quite a few organizations including nonprofits and uh, small businesses. So a total of uh, 1,807 members. Uh, CE is a bit smaller over its period with uh, 933 individuals. Um, the, the total number of transactions, I uh, laboriously worked with this massive transaction database and, and must thank Stephen Beckett for all of his assistance in this and uh, my eyesight uh, decreased considerably through this project which uh, literally I spent a couple months with this transaction data and coding these and making, making sure I really understood what was being traded here. And, so in both time banks, there are over 30,000 transactions in this period, and the total hours uh, are the time dollars that are earned. And so over 100,000 uh, total hours exchanged in this period at our exchange, and over 83,000 total hours exchanged at Community Exchange in Allentown. And so uh, we, we often uh, liken time bank participation to volunteering in the voluntary sector and can attach uh, dollar values to some of this participation. And the Voluntary Sector Institute uh, will estimate uh, volunteering time at roughly $20 an hour. So we see in the, the history of our exchange here, uh, it's the equivalent of over $2 million that, that uh, has been traded and over $1.6 million in the case of community exchange. Uh, we looked at the transactions across time, this is longitudinal data, to see uh, if there are any trends. And we do see that these organizations grow. And in both cases, they actually flattened out. Um, so the quarter with the most hours exchanged in uh, the Portland case here was uh, in October through December 2005. Uh, quarters was the easiest way for us to set the metric here. And so there were, there were an average of 42 hours of services seven days a week during that quarter, which is quite a bit. Uh, at Community Exchange, the peak occurred in uh, October through December 2007 uh, with an average of 48 per day. Uh, we talk about active members, and that, that includes members who trade, who, who participate in the system within each quarter. So in the case of Our Exchange Portland, October through December 2006, there were 402 active members uh, during that quarter, and 241 in January through March 2006 in Community Exchange. There's some interesting date correlations here, and we've talked about if there was something happening in 2006 and so forth. And it seems like really there, there was not. Um, the average number of hours per quarter uh, across the history of both of these organizations is here. I mentioned the 21 hours earlier, and that's what we find uh, is, is that on average throughout the history of these organizations, 21 hours per day exchanged uh, in Hour Exchange Portland, 22 at Community Exchange. And the average number of active members per quarter across the history, 210 and 157. One interesting thing that we did was correlate this data with unemployment rates. And what was, what was striking for us is that there was no correlation between activity in either of these time banks and the Great Recession as we've come to know it. Uh, economists define the Great Recession as starting in December 2007, and uh, some arguing it ended in June of 2009 in that 18 month period. And when we look at all these transaction data across that time, there's no correlation with the number of active members, with the total hours, or the number of new members that are joining. And so that's something we'll be discussing in the, in the book as um, interesting. Obviously, there are a lot of things happening around the world, a lot of things happening at the local level that determines uh, why people would join these things. But we did not find a correlation with the recession, which has sparked so much interest in this topic in these two particular cases. The participation varies tremendously within both networks. Uh, we look at average hours per quarter as a way to standardize the metric. And so what we see is that uh, there's a very small group of super users that across the history of, of both our exchange and community, ex and community exchange, we see 
that there, there are about 3% are exchanging 41 hours or more per quarter, which is a lot at our exchange, and 5% are exchanging 41 hours or more per quarter at CE. Uh, we do see that there's a lot of low levels of participation too, and that's more pronounced at the our exchange case, that some people join and are not very active, that almost a third of our exchange Portland members across its history uh, exchange one hour or less per quarter of participation on average. So there's a lot of variance participation. Some people join these things and don't do much. Other people join these things and do a lot. 